When you first got breasts age 12, the winks, the nice tits, it's a compliment. Show us your bra. How far is too far? That man in Oxford Street who pushed you against a wall for a feel. No big deal. The shame to be so easily caught, the my fault, my fault mantra you recited into your pillow for years. Enough tears, enough silence. It was all of us, but we never knew. Take my hands, we can say it together. Me too, me too, me too. These are the words of poet Sarah Doyle in an anthology titled Hashtag Me Too. One of hundreds of thousands of voices saying Me Too to experiences of sexual assault and harassment. Me Too began in 2006 with civil rights activist Tarana Burke, but gained significant momentum and attention in late 2017. The Me Too movement is essential, complex, and flawed. It's a movement from which Christians and the church aren't exempt. There's also hashtag church too, dedicated to Me Too stories from Christians and within Christian contexts. As Christians, we cannot view Me Too from a distance. We are intimately connected to it, not just because of church too, but because of our universal call to responsibility. The ethical life is driven by questions. These might be teleological, what is the goal? Or deontological, what is the law? Theologian Richard Niebuhr, however, argues that the ethical question raised at critical junctures in scripture is actually, what is happening? Followed by, what is the right response to what is happening? With Me Too, our response lies in our call to responsibility. The ethical call to responsibility is in being bound to your neighbor, to God, and being yourself utterly free. How we exercise our freedom within those relational bonds is how we live the responsible and ethical life. So we have a responsibility for others. We are made in the image of God, Imago Dei, made in the image of relationship as God is Trinity. This relationship can be described as perichoretic, a perfect, equal, mutual dance, if you like, between the persons of the Trinity, one in which we are called to join in. With Me Too, our responsibility is both to and for our neighbor in relationship. Um, but in our post-lapsarian or post-fall world, this relationality has been broken. Me too is in part a call back to relationality. It was all of us, but we never knew. Relationality through sharing stories helps restore those isolated for abuse because now they know they're not alone. We must take our responsibility for our neighbor seriously because isolation casts doubt on being made in the image of God reinforcing the lies said over people by abusers and accusers. Our response must be to truly listen to them and then journey with them from isolation back into the dance. It takes patience and perseverance. We can only move as fast as the healing of the most injured. But we also have a responsibility for ourselves in the Incarnation, Jesus shows us the inexorable potential of what it means to be human, the infinite level of justice possible when we use our freedom in obligation to those to whom we are bound. With Me Too, our responsibility for ourselves must focus on our power. We all have power, though not equally. Our gender, race, class, the way our bodies and minds work, plus a whole host of other factors determine how much power we are afforded. This human power is intoxicating. Left unchecked, it's like following a sat-nav whose final destination is desire for mastery and domination over another. It's what's known in Christian ethics as wrongly ordered desire. 
what we need to do is cultivate a habit of power literacy. This means recognizing what power we have, the ways intentional and not we use it, and learning how to divest it from being power over another, emptying it into being power with and for another. This self-emptying of power comes from kenosis, from the Christological act in Philippians 2, where Jesus emptied himself even to death on a cross. Kenotic power responsibility helps make restored perichoretic participation of all a possibility. You might be thinking, what has this got to do with me too? What has this even got to do with me? I don't desire mastery over another, surely. It all sounds rather insidious, but begins relatively innocuously. And that lack of power literacy, lack of responsibility for our power, is magnified in a church context, because the church as an institution is inherently powerful. I challenge you, search hashtag church2 online. The stories are hard, but must be heard. An 11-year-old girl tells her minister she's being molested. He asks her what she had done to tempt him. A pastor confesses to assaulting a woman. She's kicked out of the church, and he's given a standing ovation on Sunday morning. A priest says, there's no such thing as rape in marriage, because one flesh means you can't rape yourself. Me too. Church too is a hinge. And how we respond to our call to responsibility will determine whether or not this was just another moment. The nice tits, show us your bra, those daily aggressions, abuses of power in thought, word, and deed have not stopped and will not stop unless we begin with ourselves. They're small acts, but they escalate fast. We have a responsibility to educate ourselves on abuse and coercion, to call out injustice, to advocate for survivors, and to realize when our power, personal and institutional, is part of the problem, and so make the necessary change. We must remember that sin means that none of us is beyond reproach. So safeguarding training should be worship, not a chore. We need to teach sexual consent in our marriage preparation courses and to our youth groups. We need to be the prophetic voice of healing, of hope, of redemption and sanctification, which transcends the hashtag and shares the good news of Jesus Christ. What the church can learn from me too is being noisy, being uncomfortable and expecting change when we demand it. The truth is the stakes are too high to ignore our call, our ineliminable call to responsibility, responsibility that is not afraid to hold the hands of those who have been hurting for too long. So all of us, You and me, none of us is exempt. In our freedom, let's follow God's call so that me too, church too, is not just some forgotten moment, but a permanent, transformative, powerful movement.